ourselves around him. We wind ourselves around his strength. We're in union with him today, so his strength is our strength. Oh, yes, Lord. We braid ourselves with you. Let's just thank him. He's lifting us up today. Lifting us up. Lifting us up. Lifting our head above the heads of our enemies today. We get a different perspective than the rest of the world. Our heads are lifted up today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Bless you, Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon you today, Lord. Let's just declare strength is rising in me today. Strength is rising in me. Every kind of strength I need. Every kind of strength I need, strength for endurance, strength for loving, strength for patience, strength for all that I need today. Thank you that I have more than enough, more than enough in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Well, you can be seated for a little bit. We're just going to shift gears a little bit. We've spent the last few Sundays uh, really focusing on meditating in the Word, and I trust that you're taking that to heart understanding that we do what we do here so that you can do it at home every day. And so meditating in the Word is a daily a daily event. David talks about meditating in the morning, meditating in the afternoon, meditating in the evening. And that's something we have to be very intentional about. But I'll tell you, when you, when you do develop the habit of meditating the Word in your heart until it washes your mind, you become unshakable. Amen. You really become unshakable. If you're being shaken by the stuff going on in the world today, then unplug from the TV and plug into the Word of the Lord. That's not a religious legalistic thing. It's a life-giving thing. It's just like, okay, if you're weak, go eat. Right? If you're weak, go eat. And the food of, of heaven is His Word. I want to talk to you just for a little bit. This is really um, not new to you but to reinforce and maybe give some underbracing for why we do what we do. Uh, and that is warfare. Spiritual warfare comes in praise. And the cool thing about spiritual warfare for us is that he does the hard part, we do the easy part. Yes, that's right. Yes. And you know, he's not, he's not called us to, to literally take out a sword and chop off anybody's ear. Exactly. You know, it's a wrath. Uh, and anger doesn't doesn't work the righteousness of God. So our warfare, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, they're mighty how? Through God, not through us, not through my loud voice or my 
energy. I've got to really get with it. I've got to scrunch up my face and, and make it look like it hurts. No, your weapons are not powerful by your countenance. Your, your weapons are powerful through God. Amen. To the pulling down of strongholds. And what does it say about these weapons? They're not carnal, but they're spiritual weapons. So that means that there's something that we do that God takes, something that looks weak, something that looks pretty uh, in a, in a, what's the word? Anemic. That's a good one. Pretty anemic to us, but he takes it and he makes it powerful in the spiritual dimension. Now, the lifting of the hands is one of those things. Lifting of the hands doesn't seem like much. In fact, we can just label that a charismatic exercise and that's what those people do. But what we really need to see is all through Scripture, way before Acts chapter 2, way before the Holy Spirit was poured out, the power of the lifting of the hands was demonstrated and called for by the Lord. Now what, what we want to see is that by our simply surrendering ourselves to something that we may not fully understand, we put ourselves in a place to let God go to work for us, yeah, to do yeah. what we cannot do. When we say strength will rise as we what? Wait. The word wait there literally means to, to bind about, to, to braid, or to wind around. It's the picture of a little tender, weak vine that is winding itself around a mighty tree, a huge tree. And that little weak vine then takes on the strength of that tree. It becomes as immovable as the tree is. All right. So it's not how many scriptures we can quote. It's not how many times we've been to church. Do we understand how to employ the power of the spiritual dimension through our lives and through our faith? So there's many instances in scripture. Uh, books are written about it where we see the reference of lifting of hands. Let's just stop and think for just a moment. Uh, you might want to turn that middle mic on. Give me a time where you see, especially from the Old Testament, where they lifted up their hands. Moses. Moses in front of the Red Sea lifted up his staff. Which he's lifting up his hand and his staff. When's another time Moses has his hands up? Huh? The battle against the Midianites, all right? In the war. What happens? Aaron and Hur hold up his hands. Now, have you ever thought about that? What's significant about that? Why is the lifting of hands? The scripture is very clear that when his hands were up, they were winning. When his hands went down, they were losing. Significant. What's another time? You see any other situations in the Old Testament, especially where they're lifting hands? In Psalm 141, the lifting up of my hands is the evening sacrifice. Yeah, good. Beat me to it. Yeah, many times they're lifting their hands, but you think about entering into covenant. When they would enter into covenant, they would make a they would make a, a incision in the wrist. They would hold the hand up, and the blood would run down off the elbow into a cup of wine. The blood from this participant into the cup, and then the blood of that participant. This is where our Indians, our, our Native American Indians, would when you'd see them, they go how. They're not saying hi. They're saying. I'm in covenant with, you don't know how big he is or how many there are, so you better be careful how you treat me. Think about this. We've entered into covenant with someone much bigger than ourselves, and when we lift up our hands, what does the enemy see? That we've been circumcised in our hearts so that there is someone else fighting for us. So let's just look at this quickly. Number one, the lifting of the hands is a confession, it's a declaration. Raising hands is a confession to the Lord and we draw on one of the 10 Hebrew words that's translated praise. And we've talked about this, all the different words translated praise mean different things, but we only get one word in English. So tauda is a word that is translated praise, but we don't really see what it means. Where barak is translated praise, but it, 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 it means to worship and bow down, to bow, to kneel. Then tahila is to sing a loud high shrill. You see, the Hebrew language shows us pictures of demonstrative, expressive praise before God, but we get it all bound up in one word 
which we can make to mean anything or nothing. So praise may mean we sing a hymn or something like that, but we don't understand the bow down. We don't understand the, the spin and twirl. We don't understand the amid a high shrill sound. We don't understand sing songs out of the spirit that you've never thought of in your mind before. All the things that are hidden there. Talent is one of those which literally means to throw up the hands. Everybody say it with me. Throw up the hands. To throw up the hands and to give thanks for what you don't yet see. Amen. Think about it. Amen. Throw up the hands and give thanks for what you don't yet see. Wow. Thank you, Lord. What could the lifting of hands mean when you're giving thanks for what you don't yet see? It could mean it's out of my hands. It's now in your hands. Let's put our hands up. Let's declare it. It's out of my hands. It's now in your hands. So I give you thanks, Lord. You do all things well. I can thank you in advance. I can bless you before I see anything with my natural eyes. I give thanks, oh God, because you are true. You're watching over your word to perform it. Yes, all the promises of God are yes and amen. So I take my hands off of it. I give it to you, Lord. It belongs to you. I give my children to you and my grandchildren to you. I declare they're yours. As for me and my house, we will serve you, Lord. My hands are up. It's in your hands. My sons and daughters are in your hands. My children, spiritual children are in your hands. My grandchildren are in your hands. I'll not worry about it. I'll not take thought for it. What I can do about it, it's in your hands. In Jesus' name, I bless you for it and thank you for it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. How many of you understand the lifting of the hands can be a powerful spiritual weapon if it's not working on anybody but you? How many of you know the biggest enemy you have is between your ears? It's not to say that demons aren't real. Demons are real. Principalities' powers are real. But they have already been defeated. The only thing keeping you and me from walking and living in the victory is the enemy between our ears. Yeah. So sometimes getting the hands lifted up is the victory for you over your own body <laughs> and your own mind and will. Yes. So we start the mornings with praise, the acronym. You know it well, right? Present yourself to the Lord. Raise your hands. Get your body involved. Affirm that he's God. He's the creator where his creation. He's the shepherd where the sheep is pasture. Sing, yes, sing to the Lord. I skipped out. I uh, in, invite the Holy Spirit to come. I invite you into my space. Sing a song to him, then express thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Early in the morning, I will seek you. In the same way that David says, may the lifting of my hands be as the evening sacrifice. You can say, may the lifting of my hands be as the morning sacrifice. Yes. So Psalm 50 23 says, whoever offers praise glorifies me. Mm. Now I, wanted, I want you to have an alert system built into you that whenever you're reading the scriptures, especially the Old Testament, and you see the word praise, that you go back and find out which word that is. How many of you would know what this one is? Whoever offers praise glorifies me and to him who orders his conduct or his conversation right, I will show the salvation of God. Which Hebrew word is that praise? Well, unless you've got a handy concordance, you don't know, but it's the word tauda. Now listen to what happens when you throw your hands up in advance and begin to give thanks to God for things you don't see yet. Whoever offers tauda, whoever throws up their hands and gives thanks in advance, glorifies me and to him who orders his conversation aright. What are we doing when we throw our hands up? We're putting him in charge. We're putting him in first place. We're saying you're the one that has control of this, not me. And when you order your conversation aright by putting him in charge, guess what? He will show you his salvation. Amen. It feels weak. How many of you know the, the children of Israel walking around the walls of Jericho ordered not to speak? Now, that'd be one thing if you're stoic already. If it was Brits, that'd not be such a big deal. Are you talking about Jewish people who love to talk, love to argue? I mean, it's all verbal, right? They're commanded not to speak. How weak do you think they felt? And then they're supposed to blow a trumpet. Well, I don't know if our trumpets are that powerful. Well, they're not. You're going to feel weak. The first instance in the Bible of hands being stretched forth in the name of the Lord takes place in Genesis 14 
where Abraham builds an altar of the Lord and he lifts up his hands in response to the promise of God for what he's going to do in his life. Listen, how many of you have received promises from God? How many of you have written them down? How many of you have lifted up your hands and thank him in advance because you know there's no way you're going to make that happen? That's right. There's That's no right. way you're going to make that happen. This is a very practical, very daily. Yeah. This is how we walk out our faith. This is how we walk out our relationship with the Lord. We keep ourselves in proximity to who he really is. You are the mighty God. You are the everlasting God. So I throw my hands up in advance and I thank you that you watch over all of your promises and bring them to pass. So Abraham does that. And in Romans 4, it says that he's the father of us all as the father of faith. In other words, what he did is how we live out our faith. So as Abraham is throwing his hands up in response to the promise of God, you and I learn to quit trying to make the prophetic word happen. Quit trying to make the promise of God happen. Throw up your hands and give thanks in advance. He's the one that's bringing it to pass. So like so many great principles in the Bible, you fall, find that this law of first usage, it's called the, the, the primacy principle, the law of first usage. And then this first usage, Abraham sets into motion the law of faith and the lifting of the hands is how we do that. We confess that we're not enough to make it happen, but you are enough to make it happen. So I'm lifting my hands to you. How can my hands be that powerful? Secondly is conflict. First is confession, and then conflict. Upraised hands determines victory in intercession. So this brings us to the scene that we've talked about, Exodus 17, 11. The stretching forth of Moses' hands determined whether or not the victory was going to take place. And after a while, Moses' hands got weary. Now, if, if that doesn't tell you something, not only were the Israeli armies not strong enough to win in the battle, Moses was so weak he couldn't even keep his hands up. Have you ever felt that way? I don't even think I can just, I don't even think I can praise God. I just can't even get out of bed and go to church today. I just, Arr. Sometimes if you were to come by my house early in the mornings, Look through the front window of my room. Uh, we have a triad room there. It used to be a dining room. And quite often, you won't hear anything. You'll just see me. Just there. Maybe 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes. Just there. There's something powerful about taking a stance where the enemy, your mind, your body, Everybody seeing you in the spirit dimension knows you're not trying to pull this off yourself. Come on, let's put our hands up. Come on, put your hands up. You don't even have to say anything, just put your hands up. Just put them up. He didn't say that Moses was shouting praises or quoting prayers. They just held his hands up. And as long as his hands were up, the power of the Lord was upon them power of the Lord was released on the earth. As long as your hands are up, then your mind is acknowledging that you can't do it and you can. That is a prophetic promise. That's a prophetic declaration. Let's just say it out loud. I can't do it, but you can. I can't do it, but you can. Thank you, Lord. It may not be possible to say uh, that intercessory prayer only happens when we're lifting our hands, but I want you now to take your Bible the first Timothy chapter 2, and I want to show you the connection with intercession and the lifting of the hands. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 2 establishes the relationship of intercession, and he says, pray first of all for all men and for those in authority. So my political leaders, representatives, how many of you know political leaders need prayer? How many of you know that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord and he turns it whithersoever he will? How many of you get frustrated at times with political leaders? Don't be lying. Evidently, that's pretty normal, and that's why Paul tells us specifically to pray for those that have rule over you. And this is what he says, pray for all men, that's for the salvation of the whole earth, with all kinds of prayers, requests, 
intercessions, intense passion, supplication. Pray for every political leader and representative so that we would be able to live quiet, peaceable, tranquil, undisturbed lives as we worship the awe-inspiring God with pure hearts in the Passion Translation. It's pleasing to our Savior God that we pray for them. He longs for everyone to embrace his life and return to the full knowledge of the truth. For God is one and there's one mediator between God and the sons of men, the true man, Jesus, the anointed one who gave himself. So God's already done the work. He's already done the hard part, right? He's done the hard part to see all mankind come to him. And he says, I've been divinely called as an apostle to preach this revelation, which is the truth. Now verse 8, therefore, this is still tied to what he's just said. He's still talking about intercession. He's still talking about God doing the hard part, us doing the easy part. He's still talking about all men coming to the knowledge of God and leaders having their hearts changed. And he says, I would that men in every place and on every occasion pray with their hands lifted up to God with worship in clean hearts, free from frustration or strife. You don't have to acknowledge but I'll go ahead and acknowledge it. I've been frustrated with political leaders. I've even imagined bad things happening to some political leaders. I'm sorry to have to confess that. And how many of you know the law of that frustration comes out of feeling helpless, unheard, unseen, powerless? So he says, men in every place. It's interesting, this is not just generic humanity this is the men in the room and I think there's a reason for that we won't go into all of that but men in the natural order of creation are designed to break through to take the lead to be the tip of the spear to to meet adversity at the door you don't send your wife to the door if somebody's banging on the door and you don't know who it is do you all the men said, no way. Come on, men. No way. I'm not sending my wife to the door. Somebody's banging on the door and it sounds like they're angry and we don't know who it is. No way. I'm going to the door. Adam needed that lesson. So what does he say? Men, in every place and on all occasions, lift up holy hands without wrath or without doubting. When you feel the most helpless, when you feel frustrated about the way things are going. Come on, join me. Let's lift up our hands again. This is exercise. We're, we're learning. Lord, I'm putting my government into your hands. The government shall be upon your shoulders, not on my shoulders. I can't make it happen. Yes, I have a role to play, but I'll not do it in frustration or wrath. I lift up holy hands. Lord, may, the, may you see the men in this room lifting up holy hands and breaking the glass ceiling, breaking the barriers for all the rest of us in the room. Yeah. Lord, to follow through, to walk through those places that have been broken open. May there come a breaking open of the Spirit in the heavenlies, even over this very room by the lifting of our hands in yeah. Jesus' name. May this become an open portal of heaven into the earth right in this place because our hands are up we declare we don't know how to do it we can't make it happen we feel helpless but we're not going to get caught up in wrath or unrighteous anger we're going to lift our hands before you and bless your name you do all things well thank you father you turn the hearts of kings and rulers and leaders or oh, you raise up whom you will and you pull down whom you will let's say it together you raise up whom you will and you pull down whom you will in Jesus name that's not my call that's your call I put that on you it's not on me anymore it's on you father I thank you that you're working in our nation in Jesus name come on let's pray over our nation right now with hands lifted up Lord we call for the nation we call for our nation to know your glory we call for our nation to be shaken by your power and your compassion we call oh God for you and your mighty arm to turn the hearts of kings bring all men into knowing you in Jesus name we don't want to consign anybody 
body to help. Lord, we say that's your mercy, your grace, your doing. In Jesus' name, you pay for all the sin of the world. We thank you that you are a just and a righteous God and you're looking out for those who have no voice. You're looking out for those who have no power. You're looking out for those who feel helpless. I thank you, Father, that you're moving in our nation today. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. This far shall the enemy come and no farther. We thank you that you draw a line in the sand and the enemy cannot step beyond it. In Jesus' mighty name, we bless you for it. We thank you for it. We give you praise for it. In the name of the Lord, we can't do it, but you can today. We can't do it. If you watch news and you come away feeling trouble, throw your hands up. You see something on the news or maybe something you didn't intend to see, but there it is. You scroll it on your phone and there it comes. And you just go, Ugh. you just go, yup, throw your hands up. Throw your hands up. Instead of saying, this thing's going to the toilet, throw your hands up. Don't let wrath, any kind of anger come out of your mouth, just throw your hands up. Father, this is on you. It's too big for us, but it's not too big for you. You hold the nations in the palm of your hand. We thank you, Father, that you're doing it. You're working your will and your good pleasure. And I don't have to understand it. Thank you for it, Lord. Paul puts his finger on two things that most hinder believers when it comes to upraised hands. Wrath and doubting. Wrath and doubting. Doubting is what difference does it make? What difference does it make? What difference does it make if I pray? It's all going to hell in the handbasket. What difference does it make if I pray? Life and death. That is doubting. <laughs> Throw up your hands when you're doubting. Yeah. When you tend to say, yeah. what difference does it make? I'm powerless. What difference does it make? Yeah. What, good, what difference does it make if I cast my vote and 20 other votes are stuffed in a, a ballot box? All those stuff. Yeah. All those things. Mm-hmm. Throw, throw up your hands. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know how to make it all come to life. You yeah. expose That's the right. evil deeds of darkness. Yeah. You bring it all to life. The other one is the wrath. The wrath is when we don't say it's too big for me. It's when we say, I'm going to do something about this. I'm taking this on myself. I'm going to make something happen. Be careful. Make sure that what you're doing is flowing out of heart of love and compassion. Learn to flow with God by declaring, God, you are the everlasting God. You raise up, you lift up, you pull down, but your will will be done. Thirdly is surrender and trust. Hands represent our work, don't they? If, if you've heard us teach about the gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Mark is the memoirs of Peter, and Peter paints Jesus as the suffering servant, the worker, constantly working, 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 working. And you'll see hands in that Gospel more than, than any other book in the Bible. He's always talking about the hands. Because hands describe our ability to make money, our ability to defend ourselves, our ability to work and to craft and to create it is how the, the difference between humans and all other animal life is our dexterity, our ability to create and make with our hands. Think about this. When we lift up our hands, we are surrendering our ability to make it happen as though I could. As though my education or my training or my gifting could be enough. I throw up my hands and I say, Father, my best will never be enough That's right. to do everything you want to do. So I lift up my hands in your name. We raise our hands toward heaven and we say, I can't do it, but you can. Psalm 141, 2. And uh, Patience has already read this to us. Let my prayer be set before you as incense. Incense, that sweet fragrance that rises up to the Father. That's our prayer. Revelations 4, the prayer of the saints. The lifting of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Think about this now. The sacrifice was to be a sweet aroma rising up to God that was pleasing to him. Now that's a that's an ancient concept, but the concept is that our surrendered life is pleasing to him. And and David says, with a revelation beyond his dispensation, David says, May the lifting of my hands be like the incense that comes up and pleases you. Think about it. 
What are we saying? I want to just come back and underscore it. A simple physical action becomes a spiritually powerful reality. Yes. Something you do with your hands shakes something, changes something in another dimension. Camille, I want you to come and tell us your, your story real quick. And this is a part of our understanding surrender. When you've done all you can do and you have to have a higher power come and work. Come on up. So the Lord spoke to me when I was doing CPR. And I was in the second cycle of doing chest compressions and giving rescue breaths. And I was getting very tired. Anyone who's done that before, you know it's very exhausting. And I was getting very tired and I heard the Lord say, all clear, all clear. And before I could respond to him, the, the computer gave me a prompt to stop the compressions and attach the defibrillator. Now it's standard practice that before you press the button to deliver a shock to the heart, you have to raise your hands and say, all clear. This is to show and also to instruct everybody around you that you're about to deliver a shock, so hands have to be off the body. So I did that. I raised my hands and I said, all clear. And he pushed the button and the shock was delivered to the heart and instantly the heart started to beat again. So coming out of that, I was just looking at my hands, I was trembling, I was very tired and I said to myself, it would be just so much easier if we had a defibrillator on hand. <laughs> and immediately, the Holy Spirit impressed this upon my spirit. And he said, you do. I am your defibrillator. <laughs> and so, he said that, I know your desire to share my life with other people so that their hearts would come alive with my love. But just like doing the chest compressions, they do make a difference, but over time, you can grow weary. Will you trust me if I just ask you to take your hands off, raise your hands up high, and just come to me, and I will give you rest? He said, I am the resurrection and the life-giving spirit. Will you just come to me and lift up the broken? Lift them up with your hands. In trust, in prayer, in praise, in thanksgiving. And I will be the one to heal them and accelerate the life-giving process. All I ask for you is to come to me with your hands lifted up and say, all clear. So we say, all clear. Lord, all clear. Raise your hands and say, Lord, all clear. We thank you that you first come to us that we can come to you. And just in trust and surrender and know that you're a good and faithful Father. And you say, Lord, all clear. Come, Holy Spirit, come and have your way in us and through us. We trust you. You are faithful and true. In Jesus' name. Amen. Something that we learned in um, in the Old Testament times when the priest would come and present a sacrifice to the Lord. The sacrifice wasn't considered to be offered just when it was brought into the temple. It wasn't considered to be offered just when it was put on the altar. It was only considered to be offered once the hands were taken off the sacrifice. So that's the same thing that we said. We said, all clear. I'm bringing it to you and I'm taking the hands off of it. It's all clear. I'm asking you to work, not me. Amen. I think it's also an important application to understand that until we take our hands off of it, we're going to probably try to take credit for it. <laughs> and if we can understand that we turn it over to Him and He's going to work, there's going to be a power that's going to be a defibrillator, defibrillator that is going to insert a power that's greater than us. And if our hands are on there, it's liable to hurt us. 
there, there's some truth there. Many, many times we've taken credit for things God did, and then the very thing that was intended to be a blessing became a pain to the church. So we take our hands off. It feels weak. It feels like we've given up. Maybe we're too tired. We do, we do give up. I'll never forget one of the young ladies that was in my youth group back in 1863. She was a 12-year-old African-American with sickle cell anemia. And since she was four years old, she was having a dialysis twice a week. Big needles stuck in her veins twice a week from the time she was four. Now she's 12. She's, we'd go pick her up, bring her to the youth group. And one night she just got tired. I would take her to get her dialysis and she'd be so weird. And by that time she developed some pretty severe psychological trauma reactions when she would see anybody in a white coat in a stethoscope. When she would see anybody from the medical profession coming, she would know the pain was about to start. And her mom tells me this uh, after she passed away. She goes in and lays down on the couch one night about 10 o'clock and she just said, Mom, I'm tired. I'm too tired. And she just raised her hand. And she went to be with the Lord. Sometimes when you're tired and you turn it over the Lord, something happens you don't expect to happen. But when you let him work, it'll always be better than you think. Amen. Right now, we're going to take that on. I want you to just stand with me for the next five minutes. We're going to just exercise what we've learned. And I would like for us to start with the uh, praying for the team, declaring for the team over in Santorini, Greece. We, they're, they're having... Uh, outstanding results. Daniel Gurry uh, wrote us yesterday and said this is the most powerful blitz we've ever had. They've already had like 20 people come to the Lord. They've had um, like 10 people baptized in the Holy Spirit, people healed. Uh, and then I got this message from William this morning. We need prayer. My teammate Anna is at the ER right now for heat exhaustion. So they've been outside a lot in the heat. I want us to just lift up our hands and let's ask God to come baptize that island called Santorini. Let's ask Him to come and turn that into a Christian uh, a power base. Thank you, Father. To come on behalf of Anna today, we lift up our hands. We're too far away to be able to help in a natural way, but we lift up our hands today. We say all clear. All clear for Santorini. All clear for the team. All clear for Daniel and Christine. All clear for the kids. We declare the power of the highest shall overshadow them. All the Holy Ghost shall come upon them and work through them. We declare healing in their bodies, in Anna's body today. We declare healing and strength, quick recovery from this exhaustion. In Jesus' name, we thank you, Father. We declare, we thank you in advance for the souls that are coming to you. Even this week, we thank you in advance for people that are being healed. We thank you in advance for people that are being changed. They came there to see a, a beautiful place, and they see the most beautiful one. Oh, in creation, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We surrender. We say we're not big enough to make any change from here. But you are, God. We thank you. We lift up holy hands without wrath and without doubt in Jesus' name. We don't say there's nothing we can do because there is something and we're doing it now. We lift up our hands and we declare the King of glory comes in. All oh, the King of glory comes in in Jesus' mighty name. We bless you for it. We bless you for it. We bless you for it. We thank you that you're working now. Oh, Holy Spirit, apply the defibrillator right now to any dead heart on that island. Let life come. Let life come. Let glory come. Let victory come in Jesus' name. Show up in their bedrooms. Show up in their kitchens. Show up in the walkways in Jesus' name. Show up in the restaurant, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's just, uh, let's just pray and declare over the world this whole Antichrist spirit for a global one world order. Oh, we just declare, God, we can't do it. It's too big for us. But we lift up holy hands without wrath, without doubt. While our hands are up, we win the victory. While our hands are up, you fight our battle for us. While our hands are up and our face turn toward you, you're the one that is that is pushing the enemy back, pushing the enemy back, pushing the enemy back. We declare, Father, that we retake the territory that's been lost. We declare that by your Spirit, 
Oh, by your spirit, the church retakes territory that's been lost, sons and daughters, generations that have been lost to religious spirit. We declare, oh God, that it's too big for us, but it's not too big for you. We surrender. We throw up our hands and say, Lord, the best of our doings, the best of our education, the best of our learning, the best of our technique won't do what needs to be done. We thank you that you're working in Jesus' name. We bless you for it, oh God. Thank you, Lord. I want you to just pray and declare over your children and your children's children, over your family members, if you have brothers, sisters, parents that are still alive, just declare the power of God. We declare all clear over our family members. We declare all clear over our children and our children's children. We declare, oh God, that the, the heart that has come to, to a standstill starts beating again. We declare that those that have walked away from you, their heart starts beating again in Jesus' name. We declare the defibrillator of the Holy Spirit uh, is attached to the hearts of those that have walked a different way, oh God. And you call them back home in Jesus' name. We lift up holy hands. Without wrath, we're not going to try to do it ourselves. Without doubting, we're not going to say it doesn't make a difference. We're declaring, Lord, that you use these feeble weapons in the natural and turn them into powerful weapons in the spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, I bless you for it. I bless you for it. We call in the lost. We call in the orphans. Back to Father's house in Jesus' name. We call for a mighty outpouring of your spirit. We call for a global spiritual sonship awakening in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, that the door is wide open. You've opened a door that cannot be shut. We thank you, Lord, that the door into the throne room is wide open for every orphan to come in and find their name at the table. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for it, Lord. I thank you for it, Lord. I bless you, Father. Thank you, Lord, while hands are up. Maybe there's somebody here that just something quickened in you that you want to declare with our hands up. Maybe an all clear or I surrender. Or it's too big for me or it's not too big for you. Anybody want to declare something, we'll join with you and stand with you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just declare that I don't have the strength to do it. But, Father, that it's, it's, it's not by my might, it's yes. not by my power, but it's yes. by your own spirit that I can submit to you. Yes. 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 yes, let strength rise, oh God, as we surrender to you. Let's Thank declare out that you are always enough. Yes, yes. you are. You are always enough. More than enough. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your joy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Others see it and cling on to it. Yes. Thank you, Lord. For your goodness, yes. your presence. Lord. Yes. Thank you. Restore your joy. You're dancing to your church, oh God, especially in the West. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for taking back ground. Yes. Thank you for taking back ground in our generation. Yes. 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 And Father, I declare that this assignment that you have given me is so far beyond my capabilities. Amen. I cannot do it. I cannot do it, Lord. And so I give it to you. I yes. give you the financing, the time, Father God, yes. and even my maturity in the moment. Lord. Yes. I give it to you, and I say thank you, for yes. you are a successful God. Yes. Yes. And when you say your word and you give us an assignment, Lord, do you thank make sure that it's accomplished? Thank you. And I thank you, Father God, you. that it is done in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. Thank yes. you, Lord. Yes. Father, we feel helpless about the situation of sex trafficking and child abuse and pedophilia in the end. We seem too small to be able to do anything about it, but by raising our hands, we put it in your hands. And we ask that you act, Lord. We ask for you to intervene. We ask for you to rescue. We ask for you to restore. We ask for you to hold accountable those that need to be held accountable. We transfer it over to you, Father, and ask you to move. Put it in your hands today. Put it in your hands today. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just thank you that we stand here, God, not people that are perfect, but that you told us to be those who are imperfect. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 
I pray your kingdom of righteousness rule and peace of your Holy Ghost take over. Yeah. And you will make your will be done. Yes. 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 Father, I could not save my family from this. I don't know you, Lord, but you can. Yes. Yes. I am, yes. Lord. All in fear and activity. Yes. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. And I lift up our children. We can't be with them every minute of every day. We can't be watching every over everything that they do and everything everything that, that is thrown their way. But we commit them into your hands, Father. We have to put a hedge of protection around them. That no word of the evil will come near them. That no one with evil intent will, will be able to come near them. We have that you keep them pure. That you that you so anchor them in their identity of who they are in you. That they, that their appetite would not be turned to the things, to the false things that the enemy wants to throw at them. We thank you, Father, that you protect them, that you watch over them, that you guard them, that you keep them safe. Yes. Mercy. Thank you. Let's declare it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the Spirit of the living God. Do this with me just before we before we finish here. I want you to take your hands and I want you to do this. This is what we do when we worry. Worry is praying to ourselves. What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? What am I gonna do? Am I gonna do? Yeah. All right, I want you to do this. All right. Do it again. Turn your worry. Into praise. Worry into praise. Very busy way to see where you are. Turn your word into praise. It's, listen, praise is a thing of humility. It humbles us to praise Him, especially when we want to go do something about it. Mm. It humbles us to praise Him. That's a powerful thing. It's a powerful place to be because He will respond. One other thing I want to share. Before we dismiss, something the Lord spoke to me about this weekend and then spoke to Chief about it yesterday, totally separate situation. Um, and it has to do with this room that we're standing in. We've, we've made declarations that the building is nothing, but we are the church. I think we all know that. Okay. Now, we know that. But here's what the Lord spoke to me about. He said, it's not the building but it's the encounter that makes a place sacred. If you look back through the Old Testament, it's when Abraham encountered God that he built an altar there. When Jacob ran as far as he could go and he put his head on a rock and he went to sleep and he encountered God, that became Bethel. The cities of Israel are named what they're named because there was an encounter there in many of those situations with God. What I heard the Lord say to me is that there's going to be many, 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 many people that are going to encounter God in this space. Yes. It's not about the space. Neither will we minimize that God has done a wonderful thing to give us this space. We're grateful for the space. But this space is going to become sacred to many people because God's going to meet us here in this place. You understand the subtle difference? The subtle difference. We don't glorify building, not that you glorify this commercial kind of metal warehouse anyway. But the Lord said, do not, do not mistake people who have an encounter and then see a space as sacred for them with somehow thinking more of a building than they ought to. I mean, you say, Lord, we want all the encounters that we can get from you. I want encounters in this space. I want to encounter you here, God. I want to meet you in ways I've never met you before. Oh, I thank you for sacred spaces because we encounter you in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Give somebody a 10 second hug, and we've got about five minutes before we crank up again. God bless you.